Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table. Here's how you play Outnumbered. This truck is carrying the Infinity Generator down to the Atomics Lab. But these bad guys are closing in. If they break through our defenses, they'll steal the Infinity Generator and we'll lose. And there's only one way to stop them. With math! So put the truck up here and the barricades down here. Deal everyone a hero card. Shuffle the bonus powers deck and deal one bonus power card to each player as well. Then shuffle up the villain deck. If you're playing on the easier sidekick mode, you just want the blue guys in the deck. But if you're looking for more of a challenge, you can play in hero mode. You shuffle the purple cards in there as well and add the event deck. This bad guy is absolute zero, the big boss. Cut the deck, shuffle him into one half of it and put the other half on top. That's how you make sure Absolute Zero doesn't appear until later in the game, but you'll never be sure when he'll turn up. If you want a game somewhere in between sidekick and hero modes, you can play with either the purple villains or the event deck. You're all working together to stop the bad guys from stealing the infinity generator. Pick one person to be the starting player, and that person rolls three dice. You have to apply math to the numbers on the dice to match the numbers on the bad guy's cards. Then you get to knock those villains off the board. I'll show you some examples in a second. At the end of each player's turn, you move the infinity truck down the board. If it hits a white circle, pass the dice to the left and the next player takes a turn. But if the truck hits a spot with a red burst on it, the villains get to take a turn. So it keeps going like that. One player takes a turn, the truck moves, if it hits a red burst, the villains take a turn, and then the dice get passed on to the next player. Here's what happens when the villains get to go. All of the villains move down to the next row and you deal a new batch of villains to the top row. If you're playing on hero mode, you also draw an event card and do what it says. If you're lucky, the event card doesn't do anything, but most of the time, it'll make the villains move even farther down the board or it'll make extra villains appear on all these red spaces. If a villain bumps into one of your barricades, you get rid of the barricade and the villain. But that leaves the Atomics Lab wide open. If a different villain gets through that spot on a later turn, will you lose the game? Let's see how to stop the villains in their tracks using the powers of math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and squaring. The easiest way to defeat a villain is just to match one of the dice you rolled to its number. So this villain has a four, and one of the dice you rolled was a four. So, wah! Your number's up. Now you can't use that die to defeat any other bad guys. It's used up. To defeat this villain, you can add two numbers together. So if you add three plus two, you get five. Wah! Take five, evildoer. You can use multiplication to tackle villains with bigger numbers on them. This villain is a 10. You can multiply two times five to get 10 and defeat him. Wah! We've got your number. You can even use math in multiple steps in any order that you want. You rolled a two, a three, and a six, and you're targeting this villain. Two plus three is five, and five times six is 30. Wah! Now that's what I call crunching numbers. Well, don't forget subtraction. Four minus one is three. Three times six is 18. Wah! <laughs> you really did a number on him. But what do you do if you're playing in hero mode and you need to get up to some really big numbers? Well, you can square a number. That just means multiplying a number with itself. Three squared is three to the power of two. Three times three is nine. Four squared is four to the power of two. Four times four is 16. Six squared is six to the power of two. Six times six is 36. 36 divided by two is 18. Five squared is five to the power of two. Five times five is 25. 25 plus six is 31. Hwah! Every player was dealt a hero card at the beginning of the game, and each hero has his or her own special ability that you can use once per turn. 
Egalitarian gets to change one die to the same number as another. So by changing this one to equal this four, he can defeat this four villain. And he can multiply four by five to get 20 to defeat this one. We have zero tolerance for evil. Digitizer gets to turn a die to its opposite face. And here's a secret about dice. Two opposite sides always add up to seven. So the flip side of a two is a five, and the flip side of a one is a six. See? So if Digitizer is fighting this 24 villain, she can flip this three to a four, and then multiply four by six to get 24. She 86 him. The M1 robot can knock one or two off a number. Powering up this five by squaring it makes it 25. And subtracting two from that gets you 23 to defeat this villain. Now he's taking 40 winks. Great Divides Power lets you re-roll any or all of your dice. Big Plus gets to add one to something. By adding one to this three, he can defeat this villain. Your days are numbered. And Multipole can double a value once per turn. So to defeat this villain, Multipole can add three plus five to get eight, and then double that eight to get 16. How many more number-based one-liners can I think of? Zero. There's one more thing to know that will give you and your teammates the edge. If you defeat a villain on a yellow space, you get to draw a bonus power card. You can save this power for later or use it immediately. Bonus powers do all kinds of helpful things, like letting you defeat a villain with a number divisible by five, well that's any number ending in a five or a zero, or defeat a villain with a prime number on it. A prime number is any number that's divisible only by one in itself. So seven is a prime number. 23 is a prime number. If you use a bonus power card to defeat a villain on a yellow space, you don't get to draw another bonus power card. You have to defeat a villain with a dice in order to get a card. Using bonus powers effectively is the key to winning the game. Let's say this villain is about to break into the Atomics Lab on the next turn unless you do something about it, but you don't have the numbers to defeat it. Try defeating a villain on a yellow space instead, because the bonus power you draw could help you defeat that villain. Hwa! 23 skidoo. See, I thought of one more. When the truck reaches the last space, the final assault begins. From then on, the villains keep advancing on every turn, but you don't deal any new villains out to the board for the rest of the game. And if you're playing in hero mode, you don't draw any more event cards. If the villains advance and one or more bad guys breaks through an empty gap in your defenses, the villains steal the infinity generator and you lose. But if you wipe out all of the villains on the board before that happens, you've won the game. You earn 10 points for protecting the infinity generator, plus three points for every barricade left standing, plus another five points if you defeated absolute zero. Keep playing the game until you and your team can achieve a perfect score of 30 points. If sidekick mode is too tricky, you can tone down the game using these modifications. Use two dice instead of three. Use the middle three lanes only. Get rid of the barricades. Use a villain deck where none of the numbers goes over 10. Skip the bonus powers and nix the event deck. If any of the villains make it through, put them aside and keep playing. Your goal is to let as few villains through as possible. Then keep trying to beat your best score. If you make it through the whole game without any villains making it through, well chances are you're ready to try sidekick mode. And that's how you play Outnumbered. Hua! Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.